Summary of the Other Wes Moore by Wes Moore Moore, the author, says in the beginning that the book is about him and another guy named Wes Moore, who were both born in Baltimore in very similar ways. As Moore grew up and did great things, the other Wes, on the other hand, will spend the rest of his time in jail for his part in killing Sergeant Bruce Prothero. Once Moore learns about Wes, he starts writing to him, which finally leads to trips to his prison. These two guys agree to write a book about their lives together. They hope that this book will help young people understand fate and encourage them to make good decisions. Moore and Wes talk about how their father's absences changed their lives in the first pause. Moore gets very sad when he thinks about his late father, while Wes is angry that his father decided not to be in his life. The first chapter starts with Wes, who is three years old, punching his bigger sister Nikki for fun. Joy, his mother, is very angry. Moore says that when Joy was young, she moved to the United States from Jamaica. Joy met a handsome man named Bill while she was a student at American University. They got married and had a daughter together, Nikki. That being said, it was clear right away that Bill was abusing drugs and was also angry toward Joy. Joy finally made up her mind to leave Bill, and not long after, she met Moore's dad, Wesley. Wesley was a radio reporter who had graduated from Bard College and had his own show about current events. Wesley gets sick one day after work and goes to the hospital. He is given anesthesia and sent home, but the next day Wesley falls and dies of acute epiglottis, a virus that makes people suffocate. Wes and Shunny, his younger sister, are too young to fully understand what has happened, but Nikki is heartbroken over the death of her dad. The story then moves on to Wes's family. Wes's mom, Mary, is a freshman at Johns Hopkins before her Pell Grant is taken away because of budget cuts from the federal government. She has to drop out. Tony is Wes's bigger half-brother. He lives in the poor Murphy Homes projects with his dad and grandparents. Because his father, Bernard, isn't in his life, Wes feels responsible for his mother. Alma, Mary's mother, died after a failed kidney transplant when Tony was a baby. John, Mary's father, is a drinker. Wes meets his father for the first time when he is eight years old. His father is drunk and sitting on Wes's grandmother Mamie's couch. Now that it's been two years, Mary and Wes have moved to Northwood, a safer area in northeast Baltimore. Wes is smart, but his grades are bad even though he plays football for the Norwood Rams, which is one of the best rec football teams in the country. Wes gets into a fight with one of the kids from his neighborhood while playing football one day. Woody, Wes's friend, tells him to stay cool as the fight gets worse, but Wes runs into his house and grabs a knife. Wes and Woody are both handcuffed after the cops are called. At the same time, Joy and the kids have moved in with James and Winnell, her parents. Moore's grandparents live in a Bronx area that has been badly affected by the crack epidemic and rising gang violence. James and Winnell met when they were teens in Jamaica, where they lived before coming to the United States. James is a preacher, and both of them are very important in the town. They have strict rules for Moore and the other kids, but they love and care for them too. Joy doesn't want to send Moore to a public school in the Bronx, so she chooses to send him to Riverdale, a well-known private school where John F. Kennedy went to school. Moore is one of the only black kids at school. His friend Justin is also black and from the Bronx. The two boys are made fun of for going to a white school, and Moore starts to feel more and more confused and alone in both his neighborhood and at Riverdale. Because of this, he gets worse grades. Joy is worried and threatens to send him to military school, but Moore doesn't take this seriously. Back in Baltimore, Tony was shot during a failed drug deal not long ago. While he is in the hospital getting better, Wes starts to wish he had his bigger brother's expensive clothes. Wes sees a group of kids wearing headsets and doesn't know that they are drug dealers. He asks them where he can get one, and they tell him that they get paid to wear them. Wes skips school one day and finds Mary's stash of pot. This is the first time he's ever been high. He makes the choice that night to get into the drug game. Moore and Wes talk about growing up in the second break. 
Moore says he thinks he became a man when he had to take care of other people. West says it can be hard to take care of other people. West says that both he and Moore were given second chances when they were young, but a change in circumstances is what makes a second chance important. Chapter 4 starts with Wes being 15 years old and having worked in the drug business for three years. Tony has seen that his little brother has a lot of brand new boots and gets mad at Wes for not telling him where the money is coming from. Tony doesn't believe Wes when he says it's from DJing, which is the same lie he told Mary. In the end, Mary finds Wes's drugs and flushes them down the toilet. Wes is scared and angry, and he yells at Mary that she wasted $4,000. Moore is still doing badly in school in the Bronx. Police stop him and his friend Shay while they are spray-painting their tags on a wall one day. They are handcuffed. Moore is in tears, while Shay brushes off what happened and acts rudely toward the cops. The next week, though, he's back on the streets blasting graffiti. A lot of time has passed since the last story. Joy kept her word, and Moore is now in military school. When Moore was hitting Shunny for fun and accidentally broke her lip, that was the last straw. Moore's first few days at Valley Forge Military Academy are bad. He acts badly toward his bosses and tries to escape four times. The last time, he is caught and taken to Colonel Battaglia's office, where he lets Moore talk on the phone for five minutes. Moore begs Joy to let him go home, but she won't let him. After the call, Moore is handed over to Captain Ty Hill, a 19-year-old African-American man who is a very good trainee. Women like Wes, and he has a dozen girlfriends, including Alicia, who gets pregnant two months after meeting him. This news is told to Wes's family at Mary's baby's first birthday party. Tony is also about to become a dad. Even though Alicia is pregnant, Wes keeps seeing other girls. One day, he gets into a fight with Ray, one of these girls' husbands. When the fight gets bad, it turns into a shootout very quickly. Wes and his boys start following Ray down the street. Ray gets hit in the shoulder, and Wes is taken into custody. Most of Wes's other friends don't make it to graduation, but his friend Woody does. Wes got lucky when he was convicted in a youth court for trying to kill Ray. He only has to spend six months in a juvenile detention center. Wes moves in with his aunt Nicey after he gets out of jail and starts selling drugs again. The most money that Wes's crew makes in a day is $4,000. Wes gets caught again when he sells drugs to a police officer who is not supposed to be there. Moore has changed a lot since he started military school. He is now well-behaved, polite, and works hard. He is a great basketball player and gets letters of interest from many schools. However, Moore's uncle Howard tells him to have a backup plan because, despite his skills, he is not likely to make it to the NBA. At the same time, Justin writes that Shay has been jailed for having drugs with the purpose to sell them. A group of drunk teens, one of whom says he is Colonel Bose's son, follow Moore and another student, Dalio, to a pizza place in a nearby town one evening and start to bother them. The teens yell racist slurs and throw something heavy at Moore's face, but he doesn't fight back. Instead, he makes sure that he and Dalio get home safely. Moore asks Wes in the last break if he agrees with the idea that people are shaped by the places they live. Wes says that he does, and that he thinks that other people's expectations decide people's fates. If someone is expected to succeed, they will succeed, and if someone is expected to fail, they will fail. Moore is learning how to be a jumper right now. He's become really interested in reading, and Colin Powell's book has really moved him. He chose to stay at Valley Forge's junior college to get his associate's degree. At age 19, he is one of the youngest leaders in the American service. Now, Wes has four kids, two with Alicia and two with Cheryl, a 23-year-old woman who is addicted to heroin. Wes wants to leave the drug game because he is tired of it. He asks his friend Levy for help, and the two of them decide to join Jobs Corps. Wes loves the Jobs Corps site, gets his GED in record time, and does great in his training as a builder. He even builds his daughter a house. Things get harder when they get back to the real world, though. 
Wes works casual, low-paying jobs and doesn't have time for his family. He starts selling drugs again in the end. Again, the story jumps ahead in time. While robbing a jewelry shop, Tony and Wes killed Sergeant Bruce Prothero, who wasn't on duty. Mary just found out about this. The cops search her and question her non-stop. They even show up at Aunt Nicey's daughter's wedding and ask the guests where Wes and Tony are. In fact, Tony and Wes are hiding out at the North Philadelphia home of their uncle. The men are caught and charged after 12 days. Tony takes a plea deal to avoid the death sentence, but Wes says he is innocent, so his case goes to court. He was found guilty and given a life term. Moore, on the other hand, is a student at Johns Hopkins University and is finishing up his second job with Mayor Kurt Schmoke. Moore is given the famous Rhodes Scholarship after Schmoke tells him to do so. Moore goes to South Africa to study abroad the following term. He meets Mama and Zinzi there, and they teach him about the effects of apartheid and the Kosa tribe ceremonies for coming of age. Moore finds out about Wes for the first time while he is in South Africa. Moore gives everyone who was important in the book an update in the coda. At 33 years old, Wes is a grandfather and is in the 10th year of his jail term. Most of Moore's family members are successful and happy, but most of Wes's family members are still having a hard time, and both Tony and Cheryl are dead. Moore has had a very impressive work track record. Before getting married to his best friend, Don, he works at the White House and on Wall Street, serves in Afghanistan, and has a master's degree in international affairs from Oxford. Moore says again that it's hard to say what made his and Wes's lives different, but that the support of his family and community had a hugely positive effect. Moore says in the afterword that some readers were let down because he didn't say for sure what made the difference between his fate and Wes's. He also says that each person will probably have a different answer, which is fine. Moore is touched that so many people like the book. He was especially encouraged to hear from a 15-year-old in youth detention who said that the book made him want to make good changes in his life. In The Call to Action, Tavis Smiley says that the book displays how people's lives are made and inspires readers to understand their own strengths. He encourages the reader to put up their maximum effort and believes that God will take care of the rest. About the Author Moore was born in Maryland, in Tacoma Park. After his father died, his mother and the kids moved in with her parents in the Bronx. Moore went to the well-known Riverdale County Day School when he lived in the Bronx. But he wasn't doing well in school and often missed classes. Because of this, his mother finally took him out of Riverdale and sent him to Valley Forge Military Academy. Moore got an associate's degree from Valley Forge's junior college and then went to Johns Hopkins University. In the history of Johns Hopkins, he was the first Rhodes Scholar and a member of Phi Beta Kappa. Moore got his master's degree in international relations at Oxford. He then worked at Deutsche Bank on Wall Street and in London. He also did time as a soldier in Afghanistan and as Condoleezza Rice's helper through the White House Fellows Program. After that, he left Washington, D.C., to work for Citigroup in New York. Moore's first book, The Other Wes Moore, was a big hit. After that, he wrote Discovering Wes Moore, a book for young adults, two more books for young adults, and a biography called The Work, Searching for a Life That Matters. Moore has also worked as a TV director on shows like All the Difference and Coming Back with Wes Moore. He has written for many news outlets and been on many politics shows, such as Morning Joe, The Daily Show, and Real Time with Bill Maher. Moore has talked a lot about the problem of veterans and has worked with a number of groups that help soldiers. Moore was on the board of directors for Under Armour from September 2020 to November 2022. Since 2023, he has been the 63rd governor of Maryland. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.